When it comes to former NBA players turned analysts, one of the more confusing and just downright perplexing figures we have is Gilbert Arenas. And look, while Gilbert is very, very entertaining, it seems like for every good take he has, he has three or four takes that follow that take that are completely bonkers and off the wall. And when it comes to Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe, Gilbert's one of the few players who played all three. And in Gilbert's humble opinion, here's why he thinks LeBron James is better than both Kobe and Jordan. Let's play the clip and I'll respond afterwards. The reason that I feel LeBron is the GOAT is because during pressure times, he still makes the actual right decision versus what us fans and the public wants him to do. You know, and that's what separates, you know, him from Jordan and Kobe, where if you give Jordan and Kobe those Cavs teams, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. They wouldn't have made it to the championship because Jordan would have just averaged 60 and said the hell with it. Now, Gilbert said a mouthful, but the one thing I do want to point out first, when it comes to Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe, they're all very, very clutch players in their own right. And of course, throughout their careers, they've had game winners, buzzer beaters, and just big time performances in general. But I think one trait Jordan and Kobe had, really from day one, was that fearless mentality, miss or make, they didn't care what happened in the final seconds. And when it came to both those players, unlike LeBron James, they were never passive or deferring in the big time moments. As LeBron late 2000s, early 2010s, he struggled big time finding that good balance of being aggressive as well as passive. And far too many times in LeBron's career, he's passed up game winning shots, clutch time shots in favor of teammates who aren't even open. And if you want to talk late game, game winning shots, Look at the final 24 seconds in the playoffs on game time go ahead shots in the fourth quarter overtime. Looking at these stats, Michael Jordan shot 9 of 18, exactly 50%. LeBron James, 11 of 30, 37%. And Kobe, 7 of 28, at 25%. So when it comes to the clutch time play, who do you trust more? I think it's pretty clear Jordan as a late game shooter was better than LeBron James, as well as Kobe. And the overall notion Michael Jordan, he didn't make the right plays in the clutch, passing the basketball, and was just chucking up shots, it's simply not true. Look at the 97 Finals. He passed to Steve Kerr for the game-winning shot. 1991, in Game 5 versus the Lakers, was passing to John Paxson repeatedly in the clutch time fourth quarter moments. There's also numerous other games where Jordan passed up a good shot for a great shot that a teammate took and most likely made. And that's why for MJ's career, he shot an astounding 50% on clutch time game winners. Because much like LeBron James, he knew when to pass the ball, find the teammate, but also like Kobe, when to step up and knock down that crucial jump shot. And if you talk about clutch time play with a big LeBron James fan, what they're going to bring up undoubtedly is LeBron James has five buzzer beaters in the playoffs, which is more than Jordan. And look, that's a fair point. It's a very impressive stat, but it's kind of niche. What I compare it to is like triple doubles. For example, let's say one player scores 55 points, has seven assists, and eight boards. But the other guy has 20 points, 12 assists, and 10 rebounds. Who had the actual better game? Was it player A, who didn't have a triple-double, or player B, who did? I think most rational NBA fans would say player A. Now stay with me. When it comes to buzzer beaters, much like triple-doubles, that kind of moniker, that label, is also overrated. For example, Jordan 98 in the finals hit a shot of a Russell to basically clinch a championship. That's one great shot. Another great shot is LeBron James in 2018, hitting the buzzer beater over OG Ananobi. Which of those shots is greater the more impressive clutch shot? Of course, one was in the finals in game six, down by one point, and the other was in a tie game of the second round. I think most fans would acknowledge Michael Jordan's shot was more clutch than LeBron's. But when it comes to the buzzer beater label, LeBron's shot actually would be considered more impressive. 
That's why things like double doubles, triple doubles, buzzer beaters, stats like those that are very, very specific, very niche, they're again overrated and kind of misleading. And speaking of big time shots, when it comes to Michael Jordan's career, what were the two biggest shots of his career? Of course, the shot of a Russell, but also for Elo versus the Cavaliers. For Kobe, it was the putback in 2000 versus the Pacers, and the shot versus the Suns in 06. For LeBron James, the two biggest shots of his career were made by other teammates. That being Ray Allen 2013, down 3-2 face elimination, and of course Kyrie in 2016 in a game 7, hitting a big time 3 where the teams hadn't scored in over 4 minutes. Now, looking at Gilbert's second point as to why both Jordan and Kobe, quote unquote, don't measure up to LeBron James, he brought up the 07 Cavs and LeBron taking that team to the NBA Finals. And what he said, really quote for quote, is that Jordan and Kobe couldn't get that team even to the playoffs. Of course, it's a hypothetical argument, hypothetical debate, but based off what actually happened in the careers, I think both Kobe and MJ, they could have done at least that. As looking at the 06 Lakers, that year Kobe, he carried a team like few players could, averaging 35.4 points, by far the most in the NBA and the most on his team. As for a supporting cast, he had Lamar Odom, his only halfway decent player, Smush Parker, Chris Mim, Brian Cook, and Kwame Brown. That roster right there, that supporting cast, is a far cry from the Showtime Lakers, the Shaq, and Kobe Lakers. And despite that team not being even average in terms of talent, they still won 45 games in a very competitive West. And to refresh your guys' memory in 06, this Western Conference debatably was the best in NBA history, as you had 8 teams above 500, 5 teams above 45 wins, Three teams that won 50 plus games, and two teams that cracked 60. If you compare Kobe's West in 06 to LeBron's East in 07, it's simply pathetic. As LeBron's Eastern Conference only had one team above 50 wins, and only had five teams above 500. And if you look at the actual seeding, the eighth seed in Kobe's West in 06 would have been fifth in LeBron's 07 East. And saying Kobe with the 07 Cavs could at least go 40 and 42, get the 8 seed, I guess you can say that. I highly, highly disagree because based off 06 Kobe, 100% carry a team and give them a top 5 seed. Now, looking at Michael Jordan, the notion he couldn't make the playoffs with the 07 Cavaliers is even more ludicrous than saying Kobe couldn't. As in Jordan's career, he had numerous years carrying bad teams to good records and deep playoff runs. Look at 1988. That Bulls team won 50 games, were third in the East, with a mediocre supporting cast. You had Sam Vincent, a journeyman point guard, Charles Oakley, a halfway decent player, Horace Grant, Scottie Pippen, for both rookies, and Dave Corzine. Again, this roster for the 80s, 90s, even 2000s, is not strong. And MJ getting this roster and this team to 50 wins in the 80s East was highly impressive. As en route to doing that, he won MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, the scoring title, was first team all defense, the steals leader, played all 82 games, and the playoffs averaged 36 points per game. Again, this overall debate is a hypothetical. But looking at 88 Jordan, how great he was, how impactful he was, I would say at the bare minimum, he gets that Cavs team into the playoffs. And to back that point up even more, look at 1989. Michael Jordan in the playoffs, with a very similar supporting cast, was a walking 35 points, 8 assists and 7 boards, with 2 steals in the playoffs. And his team, once again, was full of role players, no All-Stars, All-Defensive players, or All-NBA teammates. Michael Jordan with that roster made the Eastern Conference Finals. And why it's so impressive, it was Jordan's East, unlike LeBron James, was actually competitive. As in the Eastern Conference, 
He played Detroit, who won 60-plus games, the Cavaliers won 57, and the Knicks, who cracked 50. Look at LeBron's East competition. The Pistons, who won 53 games, didn't have Ben Wallace, Larry Brown, the 41-41 Nets, and the 41-41 Wizards, who were down Gilbert, as well as Karan Butler. So, that right there is the end of the video, the end of my rant. Once again, Gilbert is highly entertaining, but some of his takes are just off the wall and downright bizarre. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.